Um, I think today we already did one video on reactions and I think maybe for more straightforward or less overarching view on reactions is probably just going into like each type of reaction or okay. like the specific one. So I think today's would be like oxidation numbers, oxidation reactions and why they're kind of important. Yeah. Well, I think I can do the why they're important part. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, I, right now I'm, I'm recording this video talking to you on my laptop, but it's got a battery in there, right? Our cell phones all have batteries. All of those reactions, those are redox reactions, which is their uh, redox is reduction in oxidation. And uh, it's really the loss of electrons or the gaining of electrons. So the movement of electrons from one atom to another is really how all batteries work. Um, and so you don't have to have too much of imagination to understand that uh, um, getting a handle on redox reactions is a pretty pertinent topic for us. And it's an area where lots of people are still doing work. Nobody, I have yet to have somebody say, oh, you know what, the battery in my phone is so good, I can't imagine it could ever be better. Right? <laughs> or nobody ever says, my laptop, it's the best. Uh, the, I hardly ever have to plug it in, right? Or even when you, you, I mean, I was thinking about my laptop right now, and I think it's about 18 months old. And this morning when I picked it up, it was at 100% battery charge. It wasn't, maybe it was an hour later, and it was saying like 50 or 48% or something like that. I mean, it did not take very long. So, and it used to be better than that, right? So battery technology, uh, figuring out how um, better redox reactions, that's an area that we can make a lot of hay. I mean, in uh, um, battery powered electric vehicles, right? If, uh, if anybody can make a breakthrough in efficiency or in power or in longevity with some chemical reactions there, um, that, so I get, we, we'd be, we'd be, we'd be in much better shape, right? So, um, the importance of redox reactions is clear to me. <laughs> um, so, so let's have a look at some, um, in the text, it talks about oxidation numbers, right? And that, and oxidation numbers are really just a way of accounting for, um, what's happening to the electrons. I mean, uh, Nobody ever goes into chemistry saying, boy, I'd really like to do some more oxidation numbers. But they really, what they're really doing is they go into chemistry, they do something, and they discover oxidation numbers are a really useful way of accounting for what's going on. So we'll look at some of those. They start off um, just showing a very simple reaction where zinc reacts with uh, uh, copper ions, and the resulting product is copper metal and some zinc ions. And so copper metal is this blue solution uh, this copper uh, copper uh, probably a copper sulfate or a copper chloride something like that and that's what those are typically blue and they've dropped a piece of zinc metal in there and a reaction starts to take place and you can see that there's a little furry bit growing on the outside of the um the uh, zinc metal here and the cop the blue copper color the blue color of the copper is decreasing and by the time a little bit later on, there's no blue left, meaning that all of the copper ions that were in solution here have turned into copper metal, this little furry bit growing on the outside. It's really not fur, it's really uh, flaky metal that's formed on the outside of the zinc. And so the copper two plus has reacted to form copper metal and the zinc metal that was dropped in has now replace that as, as zinc two plus. And so a general oxidation reduction reaction has one element, in this case zinc, losing some electrons to form zinc two plus, and another element, copper two plus, going to form copper metal and being neutral. And so I'm gonna switch over into the to the paper here to, for a second and we'll we'll look at that and then then we'll come back here to, all right so that was zinc metal reacting to form zinc two plus 
and um, copper two plus reacting to form copper as a metal. And these are uh, it, it will it will you'll you'll learn about half reactions as you work your way through the through through this engage material. But if zinc goes to produce zinc two plus, it must have lost some electrons to end up being positively charged. And so we could write this reaction as zinc goes to form zinc two plus with two electrons that are lost. And those two electrons are available to join the copper metal, the copper ions, to form copper as a solid. So they've taken some zinc metal and put it in a copper, it's probably copper sulfate, but it might be copper chloride, not absolutely sure, but that's aqueous. And all of these are gonna be blue because when copper dissolves, the copper two plus dissolves in water, it's blue. And so the zinc has lost two electrons. Those two electrons have been bonded to this blue copper two plus, and that reacts to form copper as a solid metal. And you might even see a hint of the, like, the brown copper color. This is a redox reaction because zinc has lost two electrons, copper has gained two electrons. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now there's a handy phrase that people use to try to keep track of, of, uh, of what it's called, they're called redox reactions because they have a reduction and an oxidation. Okay, and so one of these reactions is a reduction and one of them is an oxidation. And so there's a phrase that people say that is the loss of electrons is oxidation and the gaining of electrons is reduction. So one of these reactions has a loss of electrons. It's this one, right? We lost electrons. So this reaction, the zinc reaction is the oxidation and the gaining of electrons is reduction and so the gaining of this two electrons here means that this copper reaction is the reduction reaction. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna use this, what we've seen and what we kind of understood from this reaction to understand some things about uh, an accounting way because some of our, this is a very simple reaction but if we can follow this simple reaction, uh, we can use this accounting called oxidation numbers as a way to try to uh, understand more complex reactions. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna use a technique called oxidation numbers. On this relatively simple reaction, okay? So let's take a look at this first one here. We've got zinc going to form zinc two plus. And we know this zinc is a metal just sitting by itself. And so it doesn't have any charge. And so it's sitting by itself. And so we know its oxidation number is zero. And over here, it has a plus two charge. And fortunately for us, it has a plus two oxidation number. <laughs> and so um, for zinc, it went from zero oxidation state to a plus two oxidation state, just based on the charge alone. If we look at the copper, copper was two plus, and for conveniently, it has a plus two oxidation number, and it goes to forming copper metal and it's a metal by itself with no charge, so it has a zero oxidation number. Now, applying what we saw before, we, saw, we know that this reaction is an oxidation. And in the oxidation reaction, what happened to the oxidation number? 
it increased, right? Exactly. So an increase in oxidation number equals oxidation. Okay. And here we went from plus two to zero. And so that's a decrease in oxidation number. Equals reduction. And we've been, we've, we've done all of this as if it were, um, positive numbers and zeros and that sort of thing. And we did it up here with these negatively charged electrons. All of this is consistent because we saw uh, this increase in oxidation number. Well, the species increased in oxidation number. It became more positively charged because it lost something that's negative, right? And the reduction reaction, well, it decreased its positive oxidation number because it gained some electrons, right? It gained something that was negative. So all of these things are slightly different ways of thinking about this exact, this transfer of electrons from the zinc to the copper. Okay? Okay. All right, so. Okay, so, and they're showing this exact same process that we went, we went through, right? We can see that here's the zinc losing the two electrons. Here's the copper two plus gaining the two electrons. This is exactly what we just did. Um, and they, they talk about the oxidation reaction and the reduction reaction and which thing is oxidized and which thing is reduced. Ah, here's a, wor here's a worthwhile point. Can we bring this back over here? Okay, so this get, 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 gets crowded here. So zinc undergoes an oxidation reaction, right? This is the oxidation reaction. And that means that it brings about a reduction in the copper. So zinc undergoes oxidation and it causes a reduction in the copper. Um, Kevin, do you know what a travel agent is? Yeah. I there, there are some, there used to be some back, back where I live. I think they're all gone now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a difficult business, but a travel agent doesn't go on the trip with you, <laughs> right? They arrange the trip, but they don't go on it with you. And here we have zinc undergoing an oxidation. It causes a reduction in something else. So zinc undergoes the oxidation, causes a reduction, and so we could say zinc is a reducing agent because it causes something else to be reduced. And copper, in this case, undergoes the reduction, but it grabs electrons. It causes something else to be oxidized. And so the copper Is an oxidizing agent, and so those terms you'll see you'll see um, it undergoes oxidation. Therefore, it's a reducing agent. If it undergoes uh, reduction, then it's an oxidizing agent. And so um, it's a challenge to see oxidation and reduction, and reduction and oxidation, and oxidation numbers, and all of these things intertwine. So don't be shy about taking your time to try to wrap your head around it because there's a lot of verbiage that sounds the same, but it's just like a travel agent doesn't go on the trip with you. A reducing agent doesn't undergo reduction. It undergoes the oxidation. All right, so there's more of that. Okay, let's go back to the next section. Okay, so now it gets into oxidation numbers and it gives a whole load of rules for assigning oxidation numbers so we can figure out what things are gonna react and what things aren't. Okay, all right, so, oh, we've already used rule number one. Each atom, in, each atom in a pure element has an oxidation number of zero. Okay, so it says iron in Fe is zero. Well, we had zinc and we had copper all at zero. And then the next rule is 
hey, here's some, here's some ions. Okay, so it's got uh, ma magnesium two plus, has an oxidation of plus two. Here's chlorine, chlorine, chlorine and chloride, has an, a minus one charge, it has an oxidation number of minus one. That's exactly what we had. We had down here, we had zinc as a metal with zero and zinc two plus as plus two, right? That's those first two rules. Here's copper is plus two and uh, copper is zero when it's by itself. All right, so now here's, it starts to get a little more complex and I'm gonna jump on to this next one. So let's look at some compounds. Here is in compounds, oxidation of oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two. Super helpful. So let's look at carbon dioxide, hydrogen peroxide, and water. So it said, look at carbon dioxide, hydrogen peroxide, and water. All right. So where I would start with these is to say, I want to know, I want to know, can these undergo oxidation? Can they undergo re reduction? Well, the answer to that is probably almost always yes. But the, um, the valuable thing is if we assign oxidation numbers, we can look at some reactions in which they take place and, and help to understand which things occurred. So here's carbon dioxide and here's, uh, here's carbon and here's oxygen. We know that this is a compound. So overall, it has an ox, all the sum of all the oxidation numbers must be zero. And so I'm gonna start off and say, hey, almost always, this is the go-to place, oxygen, is minus two. And so I've got two oxygens at minus two, makes a total of minus four. I've got an equal zero, so therefore my, my carbon must be plus four, which isn't bad because we know that carbon comes from, a carbon has uh, four valence electrons. So that stands to reason. Okay. If we build, if when, when we get to doing Lewis structures of, of molecules, we'll see that um, uh, carbon does indeed form four bonds routinely. Okay, I'm gonna jump to water now. Here is oxygen. I'm gonna give it a minus two because that's a great place to start. And here's hydrogen, there's two hydrogens. Well, if it, oxygen is minus two and overall my compound has to be zero, then my hydrogens must in total be plus two. I got two of them, so hydrogen is plus one. Okay, so let's take this knowledge and begin to work it into a chemical reaction. So let's say I take methane and I react it with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Standard hydrocarbon combustion reaction. All right, so let's use some, what we know about what we're starting to know about oxidation numbers to try to figure out, is this, a re is this an oxidation re reaction? Are electrons transferred from one place to another? So let's, we can do that by assigning oxidation numbers. So here's oxygen. It's an element by itself. And so, oh, is oxygen minus two? No. No. It's, it's an element by itself. So we're going to say its oxidation number is zero. Well, we just did carbon dioxide and we saw that oxygen here is minus two and carbon is plus four. So that tells us a couple of things. One is clearly oxygen has gone from zero to minus two. It's gained some electrons, isn't it? Yeah, so, because the oxidation number decreased. Exactly, exactly. It went from zero to minus two, so it gained some electrons. So over here, which reaction is it that gains electron, some electrons? It's the reduction reaction. So we know already this is gonna be a redox reaction. Um, let's keep on, let's do water next. Um, we know that oxygen is minus two in water. Hydrogen is plus one. So far, so good. Yep. All right. Now this just leaves the methane. So we've got hydrogen. One of the next rules we're going to say is hydrogen is almost always plus one. So I've got four hydrogens, all at plus one. And so that means that my carbon, in this case, 
must be minus four. So looking at this, my oxygen went from zero to minus two. My hydrogen was at plus one, plus one, and my carbon went from minus four to plus four. Hold it. My carbon went from minus four to plus four. That means it must have lost some electrons. In losing that ele those electrons, they went from the oxygen, went to the oxygen. Mm -hmm. And so now I can start to see the elements of my uh, redox reaction. I clearly got um, my CH4 went towards carbon dioxide and clearly we must have had some electrons transferred from minus four to plus, uh, to plus four. And we went from oxygen either to the CO2 and the H2O. And so we've clearly got some, it's gone from zero to minus two. So it's clearly gained some electrons. So there must be electrons gained here and there must be electrons lost over here. So if this is the um, loss of electrons, then this is the oxidation part. And this is the gaining of electrons. So this must be the reduction part. And, oh, look at this. We see this is the reduction. If it's a reduction, it's an oxidizing agent, right? Here's the reduction. Not too surprisingly, maybe this will start to give you a hint about why it's called that. Oxygen, funny enough, is the ultimate oxidizing agent. <laughs> right, but it is oxygen reacts with lots of metals, lots of compounds, sometimes in a violent reaction, sometimes in a, in a, in a slow and gentle, but it's really, it's really reactive. And part of oxygen being so reactive is why you can always, almost always count on oxygen as being minus two, because it'll get us there. Um, and so if this is the um, oxidizing agent in the reduction reaction, then the methane must be the reducing agent. You can use the rules that we've had we we we've, we've that I start we've started to go over here, and that will get you through ninety nine percent of all of all of all compounds of assigning all all the rules and that But if we look at hydrogen peroxide, um, it it follows the rules, but it's a it's a little harder to, to get to. And so let's uh, let's bring up Cengage here for a second. So we're working our way through all of these rules. And as a general rule of thumb, oxygen is minus two. But there are these compounds called peroxides where oxygen is minus one. And so um, they, they have a, a, a different level of reactivity. It's basically what it boils down to. And peroxides are really reactive. Um, and so if you, you just got to keep your wits about you a little bit to keep an eye for when you've got a peroxide presence. And so in this case, oxygen is minus one. This tells me I just, apparently, oxygen is minus one in this case, total of minus two, and that means hydrogen is plus one. And frankly, that should make you more comfortable than the alternative. I'm not gonna write this down. I'm gonna say this verbally only, because it might be, it'll only mean something to the people who really have their wits about. Imagine oxygen was minus two there. That would make a total of minus four. That would mean each hydrogen was plus two. I don't like hydrogen being plus two. I like hydrogen being plus one because it's only got one electron to fool around with, right? And so it's never gonna get to plus two. So uh, I'm not writing that down because if I write it down, it'll become too cemented in somebody's head. But if you're, I feel much better with oxygen being minus one than I do with hydrogen being plus two. What do you think, yeah. Kevin? Exceptions are tricky. Um, yeah. It's just practice doing the homework. 
there are also like polyatomic ions too. Sure. With, sure. Uh, yeah. Where they the total do... isn't zero. It's going to be like right. positive or negative. Sure. Energy. Sure. Let's do a. Uh, um, let's do sulfate. SO four two minus. Okay. So you might we might be talking about copper two plus sulfate two minus. Right. Oh, let me pin that video again. Hold on. So here's sulfate. We could be talking about copper sulfate. Well, we've already seen copper with a two plus charge would be plus two. It makes a lot of sense to me that sulfate balanced to that two plus should have an overall charge of minus two. And so when we're assigning oxidation numbers inside this sulfate, we have to end up with a result that has a minus two overall charge. And so I'm going to say SO4 two minus, well, not an exception, oxygen minus two each one gives a, a total of uh, four times minus two is a total of uh, minus eight. So I got minus eight from all of my oxygens. Overall, I've got to get to minus two. And so that means that my sulfur must be plus six. So for sulfur, it's plus six. And for oxygen, it's minus two. Four times minus two is minus eight. One, I suppose, times plus six is plus six. Overall equals minus two, which is this charge. That's kind of what you meant, I think, wasn't it, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so the, for polyatomic ions that have an overall charge, like in this case, minus two, you have to make sure your oxidation numbers, um, when you add them all up, end up with that exact same charge. Um, that should stand to reason because we're not, oxidation numbers are a useful accounting system, but they are based on the, where the electrons are, where the protons are, and what's happening chemically as well. And so it's, uh, it's, it shouldn't be arbitrary. We should be able to think about, okay, well, a copper has a two plus charge. Yeah, I'll give it, an, I'll just assign it this number that's plus two that corresponds to that because that kind of describes where, what electrons it has and what electrons it doesn't have. If that bonds to a sulfate, well, it stands to reason that those two electrons that were, that, that it had might be over here on the sulfate now. Right, and so let's account for the electrons in that location. And then, oh, so then we're gonna think about where are those electrons divided up inside? Well, they better be divided up in such a way that this sulfate has a two negative charge. And we're gonna say, oh, sulfur, or sorry, oxygen, really electronegative. We're gonna give it the bulk of the electrons. And so we're gonna have, we're gonna call it, we're gonna think about it as being minus eight, which means that the sulfur is actually, hmm, must be a little bit plus. And so as if it's a plus six in this, at this moment in time. What do you think of that, Kevin? Got a comment to make? Um, yeah, I think that's, that was all really helpful. And I guess, just like you said, if this, all of this math, all the terminology went over your head, it, oxidation numbers and redox reactions are just another way of thinking where the electrons are. Yeah. So, in theory, we're chemists. In theory, we love chasing electrons around, right? Yeah. <laughs> and when it's not electrons, it's atoms. So, so. All right, Kevin, thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you, Dr. Hunter. Okay. Talk to you again tomorrow. Yep.